While the governments of the United States and Russia drift further and further apart because of treaties that they used to have, that they don't have now, uh, perhaps as far apart, by the way, as they've been in decades, both countries are now ominously stepping up their weapons manufacturing. It's not a rosy picture for the future, not at all. But both sides say they do have, well, they do have what they have to do because they say it, the other guy is a threat. You see, this is what we're talking about. One side is pointing the finger at the other guy, saying you didn't do this or you didn't do this. Well, it's not a pretty picture. Today, the president, Vladimir Putin, talked about his country's capabilities and its plans for the future, which he says will include modernizing Russia's army by 70 percent. What's exactly he talking about? RT Julia Shapovalova reports on the plan. Russia says its response will be a high-tech one. Authorities say contemporary models of Russian weapons are unrivaled and their development will involve artificial intelligence, laser and hypersonic systems, as well as weapons based on new physical principles. The latest Security Council was about the development of the entire military-industrial complex for the coming decade. At the heart of the new program, Russia sees growing threats arising in different regions of the planet. NATO's approximation to Russia's borders, the militarization of space and the withdrawal of the United States from the INF Treaty were also taken into account by President Putin. We see that the world is facing serious challenges and threats, many factors of uncertainty. <clears throat> Technologies are rapidly developing, including military ones, and competition and rivalry are intensifying and taking on new forms. Our serious concern is the approach of NATO's military infrastructure to our borders, <clears throat> as well as attempts to militarize outer space. A tangible blow to the arms control system was the withdrawal of the USA from the INF Treaty on a far-fetched pretext. Thanks to the previous program of modernization, the number of new weapons in the Russian army today is very close to 70 percent. Also, according to Mr. Putin, special attention must be paid to the qualitative improvement of the defense complex. And of course, we must strive to maintain this level in the future, in the most important areas of development. We are talking about modern and promising samples of high-precision weapons and aerospace defense, the active use of artificial intelligence in the creation of in particular unmanned reconnaissance and attack aircraft, laser and hypersonic systems, weapons based on new physical principles, and robotic systems capable of performing diverse tasks on the battlefield should be expanded. Last year, Russia ranked sixth in defense spending $61 billion versus the nearly $650 billion spent by the United States. At the same time, Russia is considered an undisputed leader regarding many of the latest types of weapons, primarily hypersonic and laser systems. However, despite all the technological innovations and elements of artificial intelligence, the solution to most military tasks is always unthinkable without human participation and the Russian president especially highlighted the issues of social protection for service personnel. So the task has been set and various departments have been instructed and encouraged to intensify their work. Yulia Shapovalova for the news with Rick Sanchez. So you haven't heard that we're the ones covering the stories that you won't see covered anywhere else in Venezuela, Kazakhstan. Let's go to Hong Kong. And the media reaction to that has been crickets. How about the way we cover those stories? What the hell does that mean? Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. That's the key word in this case, uprising. Keep? Can you believe that? Watch it. This is the right thing for members of the media to do, to actually pick sides. Look, if you like what you see, subscribe.